Hello, everyone. Good morning. My name is Sharif Yakub. I am an endocrinologist, and I felt really called to make this video or video series about COVID and especially about the vaccines with the controversies that are going on currently surrounding the vaccine use. There are some people on the side of uh, wanting everybody to be vaccinated and even going as far as making it mandatory or wanting to make it mandatory uh, versus other, who, other people who are very reluctant to even get the vaccine uh, themselves and definitely do not want anybody to be forced to uh, get it. I think as I have followed this conversation and this controversy, I've noticed that a lot of times people are shouting and saying things in uh, somewhat of an abrasive way that makes the other person feel disrespected or not listened to or not heard. And what I'm trying to do is to have a respectful, reasonable conversation about the vaccine. So whether you stand on the side of uh, pro-vaccine or anti-vaccine, I hope that we can all reason together and listen to some information. If you are on the side of refusing the vaccine, that's okay. You can listen to the arguments and you may be convinced, you may not be convinced, but at least you will know more information. If you are on the side of people uh, who are pro-vaccine, then maybe you can uh, listen also. Uh, that would help you gain some understanding of the viewpoint of people who refuse the vaccine. Why do they refuse it? What is going on with that? So personally for me and my wife, we got the vaccine, uh, but that was not a light decision. We didn't take that decision lightly. We studied it uh, in depth. And um, as you will see, there are some of the arguments of people who reject the vaccine that I can empathize with and understand totally. And uh, I consider them myself. So with that, let me start today by saying uh, the first objection against the vaccine and what I would have to say about that. And the first obje objection about the vaccine is really a problem of trust. Can we trust the government? Can we trust the medical establishment? Can we trust especially the pharmaceutical companies? I mean, those companies uh, make a lot of money out of the vaccine that they sell. Now, before we proceed any further, I just want to say a disclaimer that the views expressed here are my views. They are based on my study, and they are not um, in any way, shape, or form representative of what my employer thinks or anybody else thinks. These are just my views. Now, you may ask, well, who are you? So that, you know, why should we listen to you? Why should we trust what you say about the topic? And that's a fair question. So I am a, a double board certified uh, physician living in America. I'm an American citizen. I have a, a board certification in internal medicine, a board certification in endocrinology. To those who don't know, that's the field that studies the uh, diabetes and hormonal disorders. And because of it being involved with diabetes uh, and its treatment, I have seen how much COVID itself affects people and causes severe harm, destruction, even death uh, for people because one of the major risk, factor, uh, risk factors for acquiring uh, a severe case of COVID is uh, diabetes as well as obesity. And those are things I manage uh, every day. So uh, my position has put me in a you know, place where I can uniquely understand uh, the, the effect and impact of COVID on people. Uh, moreover, I did uh, basic science research. I did cell biology research and published papers. And so I understand also the uh, virology aspect of it, like the virus itself and how the body responds to it and what is COVID. Um, and I can read uh, scientific papers that help me understand better uh, about the disease that's been affecting us for the last two years. Um, in addition, I have done uh, uh, quite a bit of study on um, medical billing, coding, IT, history, theology, and other topics that put me also in a position to understand the viewpoint 
of people who are opposed to the vaccine and people who are uh, pro-vaccine. Uh, so with that in mind, let us start with the first objection that I hear, which is the objection of trust. Can we trust the government? Can we trust the medical establishment? Can we trust the, uh, the pharmaceutical companies to say the right things and do the right things? Uh, the argument goes something like this when it comes to the government, which I believe is the biggest concern of uh, the, the, the people who reject the vaccine. They would say something along these lines or think something along these lines is that the government is looking to expand its powers. It wants to have more control over people's lives. And the COVID and the vaccine are uh, in themselves an opportunity for the government to do that by uh, restricting travel, restricting access. So the, the, the argument that goes on in the minds of people who don't want to get the vaccine because of the trust issue goes uh, along these lines. Uh, they are very concerned about the possibility of having a, a vaccine passport or a vaccine uh, papers that you have to present to the authorities you know, when they kind of ask of you to go uh, places or when you are asking to go places that they would limit your movement or limit your liberty in some way. And uh, if, to those of you who, who kind of are pro-vaccine and, you know, they, you think that this is a, a conspiracy theory or cannot happen, well, actually the, the, the people who have that uh, line of thinking, they resonate very much with the uh, thought of the founding fathers, not that the founding fathers had anything to do with the vaccine or COVID or whatnot, but the idea that the premise here is that the founding fathers were always leery of the possibility of the government being uh, tyrannical or expanding its powers or having too much control over people's lives. And that is why they put in a lot of uh, checks and balances in the system to, for the government not to expand beyond the scope for which it was created, which is to serve the people. So, uh, so I can definitely understand and empathize with the way the argument came about or how people hold that argument. But here is what I would say uh, about that argument. Uh, you know, the fact that you have uh, concerns about trust, and by the way, before I proceed, I, I wanted to mention another concern that a lot of people in the African American community specifically have against the vaccines, which is the bad history that has happened with the uh, uh, medical establishment or with the uh, government uh, sponsored mandates when it relates to the uh, awful history of the Tuskegee uh, experiments and the study that went on from 1932 to 1972. If you don't know what that is about, you can uh, Google it or, or you know, read about it further, but that is definitely a big concern that lurks in the mind of uh, African-American population about you know, government mandates, particularly when it relates to health and can we basically trust whatever the government says? So uh, the, my reply now about this argument or my, how I would reason with this argument is, uh, well, okay, I understand that, that concern. However, what are you going to do about it? One person may say, well, what I'll do is whatever the government suggests, I'm just gonna do the opposite. I'm just going to, to not listen to anything the government says and actually do the opposite of what they say. If they say take the vaccine, I'm not gonna take it. If they say don't take the vaccine, I'm gonna take it. So now the problem with this argument uh, is that you are substituting one form of control for another form of control. Think about it. If you say whatever that person says, I'm going to do the opposite, you are establishing another form of control that people can control you with. I mean, now that they know that, they'll just, whether the government or another group of people can just take that information and say, oh, see, they want you to do X, right? So they say the government tells you not to do X, therefore you must do X. 
And if you're following this kind of thinking, you're just going to say, yes, yes. If the government says not to do it, I, I, I must do it. But what I'm suggesting we do instead is to take the must out of the equation. What I'm asking is that you would evaluate the vaccine or whatever else you, you want to do that the government promotes uh, for or promotes against, that you would take that thing and kind of evaluate it for itself. Uh, same thing goes for pharmaceutical companies. Well, let's say a pharmaceutical company came with uh, a product that is very much hyped and, you know, the doctors are prescribing it, people are, uh, you know, encouraged to take it for whatever reason. Well, of course, the pharmaceutical company is making a lot of money from that, but that doesn't tell you whether that product is any good or not. Yes, they are making profit from it, but, you know, it may be hyped up and not good, or it may actually be good and they are still making profit out of it. The same thing goes for the argument of the government uh, kind of profiting uh, from any crisis to expand their powers. Okay, well, you know, let's just, uh, uh, you know, kind of take that for granted and say, okay, sure, the government will use any crisis to expand their power. Let's not debate that point. Let's just ask the question, so then, that does that tell you whether the crisis is real or not? No, it doesn't. So if in that line of thinking, the government will use any crisis to expand its power, it may use a made up crisis, but it can also use a real crisis. I mean, if, if they make up a crisis and use it, well, you know, that's, you know, uh, it helps to achieve their uh, ends or what they want to do. But also if the argument can be taken the other way, if, if there is a real crisis, there is a real problem and they utilize it, uh, then it, even more, they have more uh, credibility and more uh, things on their side to utilize the crisis. So what you need to do in order to be free truly free is to evaluate the crisis itself. Is the crisis itself real or made up? You can't just say, okay, well, the government says that there is a crisis and they're gonna use it to expand their powers. Then I'm just going to say the crisis is fake. And that solves the problem for me. That doesn't solve the problem for you. That establishes another form of control. You're again, giving away your freedom. You're just giving it in another way, in a different way. I'm, in other words, there are two ways for any entity to control people, okay? One is the positive way. You, like they, they say something and you have to obey. The obedient people will follow, okay? But there is another way, which is that they know that you're going to do the opposite of what they say. So, so they are going to say it so that you would do the opposite. They are controlling you in that way by predict predictably knowing what you will do, that you will do the opposite of what they say. So they want you to do the opposite. They will say something betting on the fact that you will do the opposite. What I'm saying, the only way to get out of this kind of circuit or out of this system of control to be truly free, you have to evaluate the thing for itself. Is this vaccine good? Is this decision good? Is this thing good? Or is it not? Now, obviously, you may say, okay, well, even if I accept your argument, then it doesn't make it right for the government to, uh, to uh, enforce something or to make me have to uh, take something. Uh, and I, I'm in agreement with you. I'm not saying that the government should force people to do stuff. I'm just saying that if they are promoting something, you, you need to get yourself out of that controversy, look at it from the outside and decide for yourself, is the product itself, is the thing that is being promoted, is it good in and of itself or not? Because the government in, as you would think, and I would, I would not debate that, the government can utilize any crisis, any issue, any mandate to expand its power. That doesn't tell you if the mandate or the uh, um, thing itself that is being pushed is good or not in its own right. I hope that 
makes sense. I hope that we're, we were able to listen and uh, talk to each other respectfully about uh, these matters because they are important, they affect life and death. So we need to, to have a sound mind regarding that. I'm going to publish another video where I am going to tackle another objection and we can discuss that in the next video. And until then, you have a great day and good talking to you.